Good day and welcome back to Elementary 72 Gaming. So for today's video, I am actually going to just talk about the ranking of the game after 60 days. And this is going to be quite weird, right? So first of all, I've, I've, I've I've had to look around the community, look around uh, YouTube and things like that to see what people have to say about um, Raid Shadow Legends in particular. And I found that some content creators felt like the game was about to die and that the game is losing its um, sense of strength. And let me show you what I mean by this here. Yes, it is actually losing its sense of strength. Right? Look at this. There's bots all over the place. It's not being monitored. That tells you that uh, they definitely don't have anybody monitoring all of this and if you look at the time that this has been on for it's ridiculous that nobody has pulled it down so that's over an hour under an hour right you can see it, it just keeps going on over and over again and they just show up every few minutes no matter what you're gonna do so here are the major problems the lack of communication across globals and the lack of communication across clans it's due to there being side ways for you to speak to each other, like um, uh, for example, you could always use Discord as your place to talk to each other, or you could be going after something even better and talking to each other uh, over Skype or who knows where else, Team, Viewer, whatever it is. I, I'm not 100% sure, I'm just going off randomly on what I'm about to say. So you could be talking to each other from any platform and playing Raid Shadow Legends. So how does that affect the game overall? It means that it doesn't have a community feeling. CVC, is it a community? No, it's a solo. Everybody works on their own. There's a certain amount that you can get and that pulls you up a little bit. Can you interact with your fellow players? No, there's no interaction with fellow players. So what is there for you? Why do you need a team? Because you want to take on the clan boss and you want to get the clan vs clan rewards. Okay, so is there a reason for you to be in communication? No. See, that, that that's where everything is going. The community is really weakened by these aspects of, uh, of the game. The gameplay is just so weak because of the fact that the community is disjointed at that rate. So how would you fix it if you were going about it from a perspective higher than me? If say for example you're a management director or something like that of the game, what do they need to do? Well, they need to bring in something that actually needs you to communicate. Something where you need the next person. Where you help each other on a daily. Where you grow together as a group. Right? CBC is uh, once every two weeks. Yeah, it's a great community thing, but they haven't put in anything else in community. Here would be an idea. Um, you can take part in uh, dungeons where one of your fellow party members, one of the people in your alliance can join you for an assist but they have to select the member who's going to come and join your party so say for example i want to take on the minor tour and i decide i'm going to play with somebody there's a five minute invitation open they can send a member who's going to help me get through this so oh, finally they're going to send a member who's going to help me get through where i am Let's see which one stands keep here. I know there was one of these that I really wanted. Already doing that. I think this here counters for anybody um, hitting down. Yeah, so I will take that and then I'm going to go Giants here. So 550 left for this champion to be maxed. That's minus 9 and that's fantastic for me. You can see I haven't had a very good day. <laughs> okay, so like I'm saying, the first thing is there's no way for you to participate as a team. And like I'm saying, that there would be a massive help. Imagine a level 100 player with uh, 
a 150,000 uh, unit helping you out with the spiders there. He can take you all the way to level 25. And what do you gain from it? You gain 100 silver or you have to pay 100 silver for it. It's a fair trade, 100,000 silver for one helping of getting you through stages. That's helping you get gear. That's helping you improve your strength. That could be your dragon's raid for you. Imagine you want to do a 25 full out to get uh, your six star legendaries. Remember from here you can get anything up to legendary. And you want your lifesteal set to go legendary, go for it. You come here, you do dragon at maximum. It's a quick start for players. And now you have a reason to be in the team. But unlike right now, it isn't so lackluster. The game doesn't have that missing aspect that you can feel whenever you play it. It's not like you're talking about missing um, missing power, you're just missing an aspect of gameplay with the MMO. You are playing against other people in PvP, but you don't have any reason to communicate with them. There's no reason for you to share a boss experience like, you know, taking on your clan bosses. In the start, people used to communicate about what to use, but now all you've got to do is listen to a YouTuber, he'll tell you what you can use to get through it, and then you don't have to worry about doing anything again after that. So yeah, they need to make sure that uh, collaboration is a part of the game. And yeah, it will hurt some of the aspects, but it will also speed up some of the aspects. Another thing will be early game spend. Reduce the reliance on early game spend. Force the player to invest 60 days into the game of solid hard play, and then make the spend start to creep up on you. So you need to reduce the difficulty of a lot of things so that players reach uh, levels like level 20, not level 20, level 19. They're just on the verge of going through the, the top, you know. That's where the difference in power starts. They need the legendary items to start hitting level 20, to break through level 20. They need their clan, they need their friends, they need their community. And all you've got to do is talk to somebody, yeah, uh, you know what, I need some help getting through the next uh, five levels of um, the dragon. Yeah, I've, I've got the 2.5 million ready. So why don't you help me with 25 shots at max level dragon? All right, sure, no problem. Yeah, let's go. 25 shots, max level dragon. I've got gear. Now all of a sudden, my max level that I can solo farm is no longer 15 or 13. And now it's all the way up to 18. I can do 18 on my own. I don't need my uh, clan member if I'm going anywhere close to that there. Then I go a little bit stronger when I go back up with him again for another 25 million. And there we go. Now we have somebody who volunteered. They said they could do it. We need them in our teams. This is a reason to have them around all the time. And getting our team members up means that we can do this here in a group collaboration for other objects. Now we can go higher and higher on the Demon Lord. We can hit uh, Brutal. We can hit Nightmare uh, Demon Lord and take it down. We can go into the Doom Tower with really effective teams, wipe out the Doom Tower all the time. Those are the things. But you have to know where you're going to give this aspect of team play. Give it to one side or the other side. And just for, by the way, it's either team play or hold on to the players for longer. Because player retention is going to reduce. Honestly, I, I managed to reach a high enough level in 30 days of this game. Being a good player, that means that I managed to do quite a, quite a nice climb. And if you aren't a good player, you're just going to climb up wherever you're going to go. You're going to get frustrated and you're going to leave the game. And that's the thing. That's where they're losing that uh, retention. And YouTubers giving pieces of information, it helps a lot for the regular player. And if you have it there as a supporting mechanism to everything that you're putting into the game, you're definitely going to have a lot of positive feedback. But right now, the positive feedback isn't coming through because of where it's being lost in all these small little avenues that we haven't actually seen game development go at. And I know that I'm making it sound like I'm speaking from a high position, but that's just because I can say it in this way. So that's just about the part of the review on that side, what's dying in the game. So now let's actually review the game. In terms of progression, it's extremely hard, it's slow, it's tedious, I'm in mid game. So yeah, so progression, if I had to score it out of 10, I would give it a 3. Progression is really, really difficult. In terms of um, mechanics and playing the game, I'll give it another uh, three. Mechanics don't work very well. After learning that I could program my my plays, I used it once or twice, but it's still not highly efficient. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, characters play irregular strategies. 
and they become irrelevant for multi battles. So you have to manually play a lot of your battles. It makes multi multiplay really worthless. So yeah, it's just one of those things where it's a positive negative and you don't know what to do about it. Uh, multiplay is there so that you don't have multi battle is there so you don't have to pilot your team all the way. But it's also not a hundred percent because of the weak factors within multiplay. Like for example, um, if I get a block on my team, my team is still going to try and buff themselves even though they know they're completely blocked. It doesn't make any sense to do it. I would hold off. And it's simple enough for the AI to realize that it can't use anything until the block buff has been pulled down. Uh, this champion, when he's alone, he'll still buff himself continuously even though he needs to attack the enemy. It, it doesn't make any sense because you could revive everybody then use the buff. Makes more sense. Uh, putting down this shield buff every single turn. Um, when this champion is alone and has the power, it doesn't do that. So yeah, this is weird stuff altogether and overall. So yeah. Sorry about this, yeah. Just received a message, I'm just replying to it. Okay, so yeah, there we go. All right, so overall, Overall, that's the, the main points for playability. The AI still doesn't catch up with you. It doesn't think about your relative skills. And it's just... It's just weird, right? It's weird the way the AI plays for the multi-battles. Although this is very convenient, it can become a pain when it comes to foolish moves. Especially when you can wipe out the team easily. You know you have the damage factor to two-shot example that one. This is a perfect example. This is going to use... Oh, uh, use an AoE to finish a single enemy when they don't need to, or when they have the power to finish them with uh, a single strike. Those are all silly little moves that the characters play, and it doesn't make any sense why they do it at the wrong times. So yeah, that's a draining of your skills. Then there's also the unnecessary difficulty of things like uh, Doom Tower. Um, I understand that they needed somebody who was a mechanic um, manipulation uh, individual like Dark Fae, but making her as difficult as she is by using your team, you kind of make it uh, any relevant uh, push for power. You should limit her to only that level of power. So only a level 75 or a level uh, 70 version of your champion. Not your gear, your power, your skills. So it should be lessened on the lower level and you should have to face it at the highest level of the Doom Tower or in hard mode. So yeah, that is something which I have to criticize in terms of... Um, uh, game content, right? So that is game content, the next category. I'd give game content about a 2 out of 10. It's monotonous, it's monotonous, it's repetitive, it's not rewarding at this stage in mid game. So yeah, it, it, it's a classic uh, time for you to spend. The only problem is I haven't invested enough time for it to be worthwhile spending in the game. I need to play another 40 days at least before I become so addicted to it that it's been part of half my year and it isn't that far I'm, I'm only two months into the game it's not worth that much of an investment from me to actually put money into it it's not like I bought this game and now I'm playing it so I have to pay more for these little bundles to enjoy more of it I can just give up this game and play another game there's a hundred different games I can play that are better than this in the same category unfortunately to say so yeah, that's another thing to think about. So overall, that's everything that I had to say. And yeah, the, the rating overall for this game in the mid game is a solid 4 out of 10 average. I'm, I'm not going to give it a high score in mid game. Mid game, most games die. And the reason for that is because they want you to spend. 
and you reach the mid game depending on your your ability level you should be reaching mid game around day 45 or 46 uh, so 40 days of that quick progression through the start of the game if you're not using youtubers and uh, using strategic plays and just going with the feel of the game you haven't used all that stuff you'd have gone quite well all, all the way until this point but then you're going to start getting to the monotonous part and it's going to get really really irritating really quickly because right now i'm farming this boss for 500 scrolls because only with that 500 scrolls is it going to become easier for me to complete the game complete in the game so yeah that's a weird thing to have to worry about so i hope you all do enjoy and catch you all in the next one